Frenchie, how you doing? I'm excited to film every single video I film for you too because I'm generally an excited person and as you guys know from my very infrequent uploads, if I don't have something I'm excited to film, I'm not gonna film. But all that to say, today is still a really exciting video on my channel because it's the first video in a series that I've been talking about on my channel for, it has to have been a couple weeks now. I made a video talking about how the beauty industry these days is sort of one-minded and we're all just sort of existing in this industry that is a victim of terrible groupthink where everybody feels like like they have to do the same sort of Instagram baddie makeup that's honestly way too much makeup for most people's faces, in my humble opinion. Now that opinion does not stop me from doing IG baddie makeup, girl. Like, I'm including myself in that. It's too much makeup for my face, and I know that, but I don't really know how to escape it because now that's just the way that I'm used to doing my makeup, and I, I want to escape that. It's the IG baddie really sharp and precise and perfect brows, it's the huge lips, it's the blinding highlighter, it's the baking, it's the heavy contour, it's all of that. All of which is great and all of which I do personally on a near daily basis when I'm wearing makeup, which is like two days a week. But there are definitely more options out there and on a very selfish level, I'm sort of on a quest to find them. So for the first different type of makeup we're going to be exploring in this series, diametrically opposed to the Instagram makeup that I was talking about in that video. So what I ended up coming to was French makeup, Parisian makeup. I was researching makeup from different time periods and from different countries and boy oh boy bitch do I have a list of videos that I'm gonna have to film because there are so many ways to do your makeup that I just did not know about. But Parisian makeup was especially interesting to me because whereas the intention of Instagram makeup is to paint a new face over your face in some ways, and again I'm including myself in that. I made tutorials on how you guys some catfish using makeup and I love that okay that's never going away I love my makeup for that purpose but I think French makeup from what I've seen is much more focused on enhancing your own natural beauty embracing imperfections at the same time from what I've seen in a lot of these tutorials these women are very specific about the imperfections they let show and they also you know cover up the ones they don't want to be shown with makeup and that's what we're gonna be doing today but before that if you've never seen my face before and you're ever interested to see my face again feel free to subscribe down below we would love to have you and if you're excited for this series please hit this video with a like it helps the video out in the algorithm more than you have d any idea <laughs> I'm excited for this series I hope you guys are too and that's the easiest way to let me know that you guys are on board and that I should continue it and of course if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for joining me on this little video journey it means the world okay so zooming you guys in we're gonna get right into it I do also just kind of briefly want to say that this is a very informal series I'm just doing it for fun and my research predominantly consisted of watching YouTube tutorials um, originally I was gonna go more the traditional route for research and sort of look up, you know, like articles online, I guess. But then I thought about it and I was like, well, if you look up articles online about American makeup, you're definitely not going to get a realistic representation of what's happening right now in 2020. I think the only way to really have your finger on the pulse of what's going on in the cosmetics industry is to sort of be watching it happen in real time on social media, on the runway, on celebrities, on red carpets. So I honestly feel like the most realistic depiction of French makeup is just going to be what you see on YouTube, French women doing their makeup on YouTube. How many scrunchies, I just realized, am I going to have in my life right now? In a lot of the comments of those videos, I saw a lot of women saying that these tutorials were very stereotypically French and that all French women obviously don't do their makeup this way and it's in the same sense that all American women don't use Instagram baddie makeup techniques, not all French women do their makeup this way, but this is just sort of what I found floating around. There were a lot of similarities between the most popular French tutorials and that's what we're going to do today. Okay, so first off, I'm completely barefaced right now, minus, um, I decided that for some of these tutorials I was going to fill in my eyebrows where the the tail of my eyebrow should go if I didn't shave them off constantly. I just feel like I should be starting from the place that most of you guys are starting from and while some of you guys are joining the brow revolution and shaving them off yourself, the vast majority of you guys still have the tails of your brows so we're starting from barefaced but but probably probably your bare faced rather than mine. When I was doing my research, one of the most important aspects of French beauty is definitely French skincare. When I was thinking about filming this video, I was like, should I switch my skincare to French skincare to see if it makes a difference? But then I decided, no, I'm I'm not gonna jeopardize my own skin and how I take care of my own skin. I think for the sake of a makeup video. Now, if you guys are interested and want me to try skincare, that video won't be able to go for a while because I'd have to test it, you know, for months. But let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. My first skincare I use, this is the Skin Medica HA5. I don't even know what this is called. HA5. Um, it's the Rejuvenating Hydrator. I got this from the Med Spa last time I was there. It is extremely expensive. Oh no. <laughs> How do you 
guys like the bangs also let me know however despite being extremely expensive it's the only product I found that gives me the same sort of results as drunk elephant baby facial <laughs> takes all the texture out of your skin your skin all over your face becomes smooth as a baby's bottom to get that really smooth flawless face every day rather than just the day after I do my drunk elephant facial it's an investment I'm willing to make I don't know I don't know I don't know how to justify that next I'm gonna be going into this MAC cosmetics fast response eye cream this is a weird product too I just started using it maybe like a month ago but I swear on my life it is the product that has made the most of a difference on my under eye bags I've tried so many creams for my under eye bags before because they're the part of my face that I'm really not a fan of. But to be completely honest with you, I don't even know what this product does. I just got it in PR and when I looked it up online, I remember it saying it was good for like nights before photo shoots or events. So I don't really know what it is, but it works and it helps. Ooh, and then I also chapstick every day now. My lips have been so dry lately. For the base for a lot of French women, it looks like they either don't use any foundation, uh, pigment on their face at all, they just let their skin go completely bare, or they use some kind of BB cream or CC cream. You're never going to see a full coverage foundation. It also seems like they don't use many beauty tools, so you're probably not going to see many beauty blenders or them putting on like heavy foundation with a brush or with any other kind of sponge or anything like that. It's a lot of finger work. They use the same brush for a lot of steps in their makeup, which I do too. I was like, oh girl! That's a bit of me. But I decided I wanted to go somewhere in the middle between just going completely barefaced for this tutorial and also giving you guys an option for more coverage if you want more coverage. Because I know starting a tutorial and saying like, okay, for skin ladies, we're gonna go barefaced onto eyes. That's like not gonna fly for a lot of you guys and it wouldn't fly for me a lot of days. So I'm gonna be taking this It Cosmetics Cream. This is called the Confidence in a Cream. It's just a, mo <laughs> it's just a moisturizer. I haven't been using it for too long, so I can't, I can't really speak to it but I do like it I guess and then this NYX cosmetics bear with me this is a tinted skin veil that's what it's described as I will say this product I think is actually fairly pigmented more so than I thought it would be when I first bought it so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and slather some moisturizer on my face but then I'm also gonna take a little bit of this NYX stuff and just put a tiny bit in with my moisturizer and I'm only gonna put it down near my mouth because that's kind of the only place I have discoloration. I used way too much moisturizer. Oh my god, I'm using my um ah my viewfinder is my mirror right now. No. What the hell? I guess I wasn't paying attention. This is so much. Go ahead and rub that in. I do feel like that to a very small degree evened out the pigment of my skin. You guys let me know if you see any sort of difference or if I just look a little bit more hydrated. Okay, so I found a mirror. I don't know if I really feel like that did anything, to be honest with you guys. I think that's sort of the point with French makeup, is that I was watching um, uh, one of those Vogue interviews with Camille Rowe, who's a French model, he used to date Harry Styles, and she was talking about how she likes to look like she's wearing no makeup, even when she is, because she likes the feeling of going to a party and having people be like, wow, she's not even wearing any makeup and she still looks amazing, or wow, she's so brave for showing up without makeup, she's such a natural beauty, and she sort of likes likes that vibe, likes that idea. So I guess looking like you're wearing no makeup is the name of the game today. Uh, for me, definitely it's a little, it feels a little uncomfortable, it feels a little unfinished. One thing I was thinking about a lot the other day is the, actually let me, let me, let me get my concealer going before I go into this. Always they either applied it with their fingers or with like a big brush like this. It was never fully packed on the way you're probably typically used to seeing in makeup tutorials where it's like a concealer triangle and you pack it on to cover any imperfections. It's very much a swipe swipe. One thing I've also also seen is that a lot of French women use uh, foundation actually as their concealer, maybe because it's a little less coverage. So I was gonna use this Jouer foundation here because it is very full coverage and could maybe function as a concealer, but that foundation is heavy, girl. She's fully thick, okay? So I actually think uh, this MAC concealer here, this 24 hour smooth wear concealer, is actually probably a bit closer to what French women do. So just a couple little stripes there, and then. They just take a brush like this. This is a wet and wild brush. I don't know what it's supposed to be used for, but in tutorials I've seen, French women literally just put on their concealer and then brush it out like that. Seems like for a lot of French women, the most important aspect of their makeup tutorials is that it's very quick. A lot of them want to be very efficient and very quick with their makeup. There's a lot of like five minute French makeup tutorials or, you know, things like that. Here's the thing I was going to get into, and I was sort of proven right by how my eye bags look. When you sit down in the morning and you start doing your makeup and you start you know, mentally following the tutorials you've watched on Instagram and YouTube. The concealer step is so heavy. There's such an obsession with covering under eye bags. And believe me, girl, I have it too. I really want to get rid of these. They bug the shit out of me. I almost feel like it sets off that makeup style 
to have to be like super dramatic, super full coverage, super aggressive, very much like mask makeup, which again, I like, I love, I love stuff like that. I think makeup's a super powerful tool and I think it's amazing you can do that with little little paints on your face, right? In American makeup right now, in online makeup, popular makeup, Kylie Jenner makeup, whatever you wanna call it, you use a lot of really bright concealer underneath your eyes. Whereas in French makeup, they use a concealer shade that matches their skin tone. They're not trying to look different. They're trying to look exactly like them, I think, but the best version of them, if that makes any sense. Whereas in American makeup, you're trying to cover up your imperfections. And I think a lot of American makeup sort of pushes the boundaries of a face. Both are good, both are valid. I like them both. Because it's so important in that style to have your under eye bags concealed, I and so many other people have to put on so much concealer to cover up their eye bags properly that you have so much makeup right here in the middle of your face that you then have to use a full coverage foundation because you can't have full coverage right here and then skin around the perimeter of your face, right? It looks really silly, talking from personal experience. So then you use a full coverage foundation and your entire face is the same color, great. But then your face looks really flat because skin doesn't look like that and human faces don't actually look like that. So then you have to add in the contour, the bronzer, the blush, and then you get to your brows and you're like, oh, well, my brows look silly, natural. My brows should be perfect too. So then you do your brows and your brows look heavier and you get to your eyes and you're like, oh, my eyes look really small compared to this really heavy contour. So then you add on fake eyelashes to your eyes because you're like, oh, well, that needs to match the rest of my face. And when you add fake eyelashes to your eyes, all of a sudden your lips look really tiny. So then you're overlining your lips. And that's how everybody gets to that stage of IG body makeup, okay? That's my hypothesis is that it all starts with the concealer and that's why even though you can see my under eye bags right now I'm not mad because I am leaving I think that sort of really brightening concealer packing on eight different powders you guys know I use like four powders on my under eye bags because it's so important in American makeup to cover them up I'm kind of done with that I'm going to explore options of getting my under eye bags filled getting filler in my under eye bags if they bother me if they continue to bother me but for doing the whole the whole nine yards, no, I'm not gonna do it. And I don't know how you use brightening concealer underneath your under eye bags and then don't follow it out with doing the rest of your face that heavily as well. There's a way to do it, I'm sure. Professional makeup artists know, but I don't. Maybe we'll explore that in the next video. I have a couple spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover them up. This makeup style is much more, I think, about spot concealing if you even want to, rather than just making your face all one color. Like I even saw, I think it might have been Camille's interview as well, but it might have been someone else, that they had a couple pimples and instead of covering them up, they just like turned them into little like moles or freckles. I mean, it's freaking me out to say, but I think our base is done. The philosophy on brows seems to be leave them very, very natural. Just take care of them so they get full on their own and then just leave them. I personally am gonna give my brows a little helping hand just by taking this Benefit Precisely My Brow Brow Pencil and right in the front here, adding a few little mini hair strokes. I just like how this makes my brows look a little bushier. I did see some women using a brow pencil, but what I saw most French women do was just use a brow gel. I wanna give you guys another option for if you don't have those thick, beautiful castor oil would be jealous brows that a lot of these women have, but you can use a product like Gimme Brow. This is one of my favorite products from Benefit of all time. It's not really a brow gel, it's kind of like little I guess fibers. I used to use this product all the time. It adds pigment into your brows, but it doesn't make them look overdone. Making your own natural brow look really like full and healthy and sexy. A lot of these women were like, contour, Puh, I spit on you contour. I would never contour, change the shape of my beautiful and perfect face. And it's like, Okay, well, I mean, same in theory, but like in practice, I want a little something, you know what I mean? Like, at the very least, I want a little color on my face. So, like I said, a lot of French women seemingly just do not do contour. It's just sort of diametrically opposed to the ideology they have about what makeup's supposed to do, which is that it's supposed to enhance your natural beauty and make you look like the best version of yourself rather than making you look like someone else. Drawing in really high cheekbones, if you don't have that, would sort of be frowned upon. The one thing that I'm really distraught about is that I will not be able to contour my nose because I did not see a single woman contouring her nose which is <sighs> I'm really stressed about it you guys know that my nose contour is my baby I do think it's kind of cool that in French makeup they seem to be more willing to embrace different face shapes different facial features that said most of the tutorials I watched again were from like size zero white women with brown fringes, so I don't know. I guess that's just the French standard of beauty. It would be no better or no worse. I'm gonna use this ColourPop Pretty Fresh Concealer in a shade that is too dark for me. So what I saw was that a lot of French women just did like two little lines where their cheekbones are, and then they would again just take a brush 
really, really buff it out. I'm gonna go ahead back in with that bigger brush that has a little bit of that concealer on it. Cause I don't really want it to look like bronzer. I just want it to look like <laughs> I have a cheekbone. I think that's the contour we get with French makeup, guys. I didn't really see many powder blushes. I saw a lot of cheek stains and cream blushes. So today we're gonna be using the Kaja. This is a cream blush in the shade 01 Koi. In a lot of French makeup tutorials, they use a lot of prestige makeup brands. Like, rather than using Instagram makeup brands, like, Anastasia or Tarte or Benefit and I don't say Instagram brands disparagingly They're some of the most popular brands in the world right now and some of my absolute all-time favorites There's sort of a distinction in like price point um, age demographic between these Instagram brands that are likely appealing to Gen Z and Millennials and then these prestige brands like a lot of the girls I saw used brands like Dior and Chanel and Marc Jacobs and brands like that and all of my products from those sorts of brands back in New York so today we're using Kaja baby and Kaja is just as good but I did want to mention that that is a trend I saw so this is a cream blush product so I'm gonna go ahead and just tap it apply it to my cheek that's actually so cute. Fucking wee wee baguette, bitch. The French know a little something about makeup. I feel so pretty. Even with my nose uncontoured, bitch, I feel like a 10 out of 10. Oh, one thing I saw that I forgot with the contour is that a lot of women put their contour and blush colors on their eyelids as well. So rather than just putting the concealer on my eyelid, I'm gonna put a little bit on my finger. I'm gonna go ahead and just tap that onto my eyelid. And then I'm gonna do the same with my blush. I'm just gonna take a little on my finger. And again, just sort of. I think again, it's important to circle back to the point that in French makeup, they don't want it to look like they're wearing makeup. So if you can ever see a specific color on your face um, and you're really trying to follow, at least what I can tell the style is, then maybe, maybe reassess. However, this next step, that's not always the case. This is the eye look. I say look sort of generously, maybe. I don't think many French women do a lot of eye makeup, at least from what I can tell. I've seen that some of them like using a little bit of powder to darken their lash line, and occasionally there's a little wing moment. So what I'm gonna do is go into my Bare Necessities ColourPop palette and take this tiny little, this is an ABH brow brush, and I'm gonna stick that in the black, dart across my lash line as close to the lash line as I can. Hopefully you can see, or at least I can see in my mirror that's you know two inches from my face how different this eye looks from this eye this eye looks bigger more awake more finished i'm also going to take this up into a tiny little wing just a little flick because i saw some women doing that and i thought it looked so cute for mascara almost everyone i watched curled their lashes but i'm definitely afraid of eyelash curlers so not gonna do that. I am instead going to take the damn girl Too Faced mascara and I'm going to coat only my upper lashes now, I didn't see any French women actually doing this, but as somebody who knows other types of makeup as well, um, I am gonna go ahead and line my waterline with a black pencil here. This is, again, just gonna make your eye look look so much more cohesive and finished. Next is the step I am most excited for by far, and that is lips. We have to do red lipstick today, right? Because I think every tutorial I watched, except one, probably watched like seven, used red lipstick. But as with the rest of the French face, it seems like they're much more focused on creams, tints, things like that, rather than matte liquid things, like a matte liquid foundation or lip. I'm gonna be using this shade right here. This is from the NARS Seven Deadly Sins palette. Most of the girls I watch use their fingers to apply, but I don't really want red all over my fingers. So I'm gonna use a brush. A lot of the girls use lots of different colors when they do their makeup. Lots of different reds, that is. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna layer. And also, they did not like having a harsh lip line. It was very much more like, almost that Korean, very diffused, very effortless. To sort of bring it back to the red I want, I'm gonna be using this Too Faced Stop Traffic bullet lipstick here, putting it in the center of my mouth. I look like a soul eater. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to drag it out. So for highlighter, some women did use a powder here. It's kind of the only product where I saw women using a powder product, but way more women still used a cream, a liquid, something like that. So I'm gonna be taking this Skin Gloss Illuminator. This is a Tarte product. I'm gonna take a little bit on my pinky and just add a little bit of shine. What I'm gonna do now is go ahead and show a little bit more love to the quote imperfections. I don't see them that way at all. I actually quite like them. But I'm gonna be taking this shade here, this dark brown, and I have freckles on my face but you usually can't see them. I'm gonna take a tiny little brush here and just go ahead, you guys can see this, we'll darken her a little bit. One here, 
one up here. I do fake freckles on my face pretty often, but I also have quite a few natural freckles. One last thing that I saw a lot of French girls did was they had lash extensions. So I found the least dense lashes I could find. These are from House of Lashes. I forget the exact name. They were sitting here like this, so. And I cut them, so I'm just gonna be using this little tiny piece. And of course, as close to the lash line as possible, just to the outer edge. And y'all, I think that is it. For the most part, French makeup for me gets like a big A plus size because this is gonna be a long video. I just checked the footage because I was talking about the reason why I guess women do all these things or what I think about it. But all in all, this makeup would literally take me probably three minutes to do. So I'm definitely gonna be taking some of the techniques that I did here into my daily makeup routine moving forward. I think this maybe is the prettiest my skin has ever looked on YouTube, which is crazy because I have on, I mean, you guys saw, no foundation, no powder, no nothing. Usually I wear a foundation, like four different eye powders, two different types of concealers, then a contour powder, a blush powder, a highlight powder. I have none of that on my skin right now and it looks 10 times better than it does with all that makeup. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Leave a lipstick emoji, of course course if you made it this far. Um, let me know what aspects you like, which aspects you didn't like, if you think this makeup is flattering on me personally, because again, the entire point of the series is so that we can all find the makeup that suits us the best. So let me know if you guys think this makeup or portions of this makeup should be the everyday look for a little snitch. And let me know which country or time period or type of makeup you guys would like to see. I'm totally open to anything. Thank you for watching this video, making it to the end, and thank you for being my friend today and always. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.